Hello everyone, welcome back. Today, I thought we would look at the amphitheater nubs. I know I've been talking about these a few times and I haven't really shown any good examples yet, so I went through and fleshed out a couple albums and I have about six amphitheaters to look at today. There's probably a lot more. Um, I'd have to go back and look through some of my older photos and probably just search for amphitheaters specifically. Um, Unfortunately, a lot of these amphitheaters I found don't have very good high quality photos, but I have found at least six here that I found really good photos, really compelling evidence, and I think we're going to be able to drive home the point today that, like the thumbnail says, these are for an audience. They are meant to be looked at and probably read. They don't appear like lifting bosses in any of my scenarios here. These are going to be very sporadic. A lot of them very shallow. Uh, a couple of these sites, there's only a, a couple nubs, maybe a few, and they're clustered in certain areas. And I, I really get the impression that what we're looking at is some kind of message. So before we begin today, I have some shout outs. First is Tina over at the Curious Being channel, and it looks like she's just starting out but already has some great videos on some great topics that you guys probably already know about like Yangshan Quarry here and Longyu Caves. Both of those are very interesting sites. Yangshan especially because of the nubs and these large megaliths, some of the monoliths still, uh, a quarry allegedly. And then one of her newer videos that I just caught is these similarities between a cave tomb in China and the Osirion in Egypt. And I think she does a really good job at showing the hallmarks a lot of the stuff we talk about on my channel, so you guys should be familiar with what she's talking about. And I think this is going to be a great perspective for us going forward, and I'm really glad to have her around. So definitely give her a subscription and a like. Appreciate it. Next, I just want to give a shout out and a thank you to the Lost History Channel, Michael and Buzz Weaver. About a month ago, they presented... Phil over at the Ancient Alternative View, they presented his video series all in one part on the Stone Nub language. I think that was really nice of them to do that. And if you guys want a crash course and a nice overview of what we're talking about as far as the nubs being a language, you can't find a better video right now than Philip's videos. So please go check his out if you haven't already. Next, Ziggy Dan has been putting out some good videos lately. Just the other day, he did one on nubs at Delphi. We're going to talk about nubs at Delphi today. So if you like some of these shorter, quicker videos with no narration and just set to music, please go check out Ziggy's videos. Next, a shout out and thank you to the C Word podcast. These guys just recently uh, have done a couple videos on megalithic ruins and the validity of the idea of uh, an ancient lost high civilization. And in part two, I believe, of their series, they mention Chris over at the Stone Nub Language uh, Twitter account. You can check him out over here at at Twist Dead, the Stone Nub Language. And I think Chris has one of the best connections going right now for this being a language, guys. In one tweet right here, I think he's got it pretty much nailed. I want to look at this in particular before we look at the amphitheaters. Just look at these connections. Now, you can pause it and follow his logic with the boxes and the lines, but I'll try to abbreviate for you. You can see how certain nubs follow the lines. There will be a change in the course level. It kicks up right there and switches to a different course level. It does that over here, and there is a nub there. Inside this green box on Trigutam in India represents inside this green box here, Oliante Tambo, they look almost identical. You have one, two, three, a kick up in the course level, and another nub. One, two, three, the course level kicks up, and another nub. They are both by doorways, and some of these other nubs may correspond as well. You can see at Trikutam there's a lot of foliage. We talk about how that obscures evidence sometimes, and it's kind of a pain in the butt, but we know there is something deeper going on here than just lifting bosses and language 
it's coming to the forefront of the debate. I think it's really becoming the most compelling argument so far. And I'll have links in the description for all this stuff. And finally, I just want to thank you guys for subscribing and liking my videos and watching and giving me comments. I'm already over 38,000 subscribers. This is crazy. It's less than three years, and I've really skyrocketed here. But I, I think it's because there's a validity to what we're talking about. I mean, it's physical evidence, guys. It's right out there in the field. We can compile these photos, compare them, and show them to everybody else and, and prove what we're talking about just from what's there. You don't need any mythology. You don't need any esoteric knowledge or a degree in any certain field. I think you just start collecting photos and the truth just kind of unfolds. Oh, and before I forget, I do want to thank Charles Koss over at his channel and CFAPS Chuck over at CFAPS 7865 channel. Both these guys said some nice words to me recently in their videos and I really appreciated it. Makes me feel like I'm part of a team and like I'm getting somewhere in my perspectives and like I'm making some progress in some of these mysteries we're talking about. So appreciate both of those guys for their comments and uh, hopefully we'll collaborate more in the future. Okay guys, so before we begin, I just want to remind everybody to make sure you're watching in the highest resolution because a lot of the things we're going to be looking at are very fine details. Hopefully you can watch in the largest video viewing format you can. I know probably a lot of viewers are going to be on their phones. You can probably see some of this stuff on your phone, but it's a lot better if you have a high definition monitor or a TV. So to keep that in mind, when we're looking at some of this stuff, you're like, is it a spec or is it a nub? Well, sometimes resolution is really important. And to save time, I won't use Google Earth today. I'll just try to get through all these photos that I have and talk about the sites as quickly as possible and as succinctly as possible. Um, they're really all in this episode around Turkey and Greece. You guys are more than welcome to look them up yourself and then maybe do some exploring on your own and see if you can find some others that have nubs because this is very in progress research. I've only really found a, maybe a half dozen or more and the ones I have found it's taken me a long time to find really good photos and you'll see why when we get started. So let's go in alphabetical order because why not. We'll start with Delphi, Greece and Delphi we've already looked at before a few times some nubs and some strange walls we'll just briefly look at some of the stuff around these amphitheaters these crazy textured walls with nubs only at the bottom again and then some small filler stones like right here I'll zoom in and show you symbolic esoteric all by itself crazy texturing very uniform and nubs of different shapes and sizes and then of course the temple has nubs at its foundation we'll zoom in and show you those and they go pretty much all the way around the perimeter. Some other odd lone nubs, like over on the right. Rectangular, probably broken off, but square. And then we'll get to the amphitheater, which we'll see if we can find an overhead view real quick before we look at the seats. It is a polygonal floor. It's kind of a crude polygonal floor, but it's really well done. Turned out really well. Oh, and also, zoom into the back, just to mention, clamps. These are traces of where metal clamps went between the blocks. And they look like they linked all these blocks around the perimeter of this temple, lower and upper. So, we will start at the left hand side and we'll move to the right. You see them already, don't you? Down at the bottom and a few up in the stairs. So we will zoom in and push the pixelation as far as it goes. 
so you can see they're not on every block they, these blocks are also those lipped blocks we were talking about earlier they seem to have a cusp of material around the perimeter we'll see some good resolution and some following photos but already you can see wait a minute this is not uniform this is not standardized they are clustered and kind of haphazard on the backs of stairs under the lips of the seats I want to point that out because if it's a lifting boss the lip of the seat is sticking out farther than the nub so it's not a very good way to lift it and then again where's the rest of them a lot of these seats don't have them and feel free to pause and look for yourself but from what I can tell they seem to be concentrated on the lower courses and the lower seats okay here you can see where we left off these lipped blocks again it's weird they kind of ooze out on the bottoms and sides like something was pressed into them you can see the different heights like lower higher lower and each profile is a little different on just two steps missing a bunch one up here and then none the rest of the way up I don't think and a few other clusters again on these steps and here's an interesting shape more triangular there's a couple of these triangular shaped ones not on the upper courses as far as I can tell and you can see how important it is to have high resolution if you have a shaky hand you're not going to get good quality photos of these and here's a nice crisp photo with good contrast that seems to be a theme in all of our pictures we need nice lighting and good contrast with a little bit of shadow because with a little bit of shadow they all start popping out and you can see them against the darkness of the overhanging seats see the clusters the different shapes more of these triangles that's really that couple of these over here are really hard triangles and they look to be equilateral triangles and then there's missing a few over here but they continue along the base here's almost an over contrasted photo but it gives you a good idea let's go a little farther it gives you good idea these lipped blocks and how much these parts kind of ooze out as though these blocks were soft however that was done and you can just see the different clusters of nubs along the lower courses and it seems like on some of these seats and stairways especially yep and I think this is my best photo my biggest photo with best resolution that I could find how I search for these I just Google search the site go by HD photos and usually about halfway down the page you find the really really big ones and go for those watermark or not it doesn't really matter when you're not monetized so zoom in way in here you can see how nice and crisp it stays this is really important you can see just what's going on with these blocks why are these parts indented like this and these edges ooze out I find that fascinating it reminds me of the entrance of the Macquarie pyramid down at the bottom right and then yeah these nubs again are clearly all different shapes and sizes and they're missing from a lot of places but they seem to be clustered in other places we're probably going to be saying those sentences a lot in this episode. See these hard triangular ones? Clearly a specific shape, not just a lifting protrusion. And some of these are those classic rounded top flat bottom ones like we keep talking about in all the other episodes. The sideways capital D shape. Interesting, right? And then I'm, you can see real clear here. I'm going up. I don't see any to where I can't see anymore 
of the back sides of the seats. Nope. It's just, from what I can tell, a foundational phenomenon and kind of tapers up into the upper courses here, or the lower courses, I mean, and then it kind of stops. Another really high res photo, and we'll just look at those lipped edges one more time before we move on, because I just, I think that might be almost as interesting as the nubs. So you can see it, it's got these edges, and this part seems to go over the block. You see that? The, the, it's almost like a couple of nubs, like half of a nub here, half of a nub here, and the other halves are on the other side. It's interesting. I, I've never seen anything really like that where it goes. We might see a nub in one of the other amphitheaters that goes across the block. And if that's what we're seeing, you know, what does that mean about a nub? And what does that mean about those blocks? Okay, next we're going to go over to Halicarnassus in Turkey. So first, just an overview photo. At first, I thought I was, I was almost positive I was going to find them on the outside walls, on the lower foundations of the outer walls, but no, they seem to all be nice, smooth, and pristine, proving that the builders could do this. I'll zoom in to prove the point. You do see some filler stones and L-shaped blocks. That is going to be a repeat, repeating hallmark for the amphitheaters, I think. A lot of L-shaped blocks and a few bevel blocks as well in some of them. But yeah, I don't, yeah, these even might be partial bevel blocks. But I don't see any nubs. I don't see any broken off ones, remnants. These all are nice, smooth surfaces. Even on these older blocks or more weathered blocks, darker blocks, however you want to describe them. They're pitted but I don't think any of this is broken off nubs. That might be some patching there, I'm not sure. But yeah, I think they're all going to be concentrated on the seats again. Perhaps those are nubs. Those might be two nubs on that block. Let's see how far I can zoom in. I don't know, see? It starts breaking down, you can't really tell, but perhaps there's a couple nubs on a corner. That, that makes sense. That's something we see in other places. Oh, but did you guys pay attention to the background? See them? They are all over these back seats. And even from back here, this is probably one of my most stepped back photos, you can still start to see them from there. So these, I think, are meant to be seen more than likely, you're supposed to stand at the bottom and in the middle and look up. And I don't know which direction you read them, but it seems like that's how they're meant to be viewed. An interesting side note, you can see over here on the right a couple of nubs. And I'm not sure how much more of this there was in the past. I'll go a little bit farther because this isn't bad. You can see here, underneath, look at this row, one, two, three, four, five, maybe more under the railing here, and then a few more on the backs over here. And then a lot of these are missing, maybe there were more. Maybe these are the expensive seats, uh, the reserve seats, I don't know, but it is interesting how certain seats have nubs on them. Luckily, there's some really good photos of Halicarnassus. So look up here on the left. Look at all of these. Oblong, small and square, some other different oblong shaped ones. They disappear for a while. They show up in just a couple places. Scrolling over, there's a ton up here in this, in this upper area here not really any in the lower there doesn't seem to be almost any at all nope none none the lowest one I see is over here so these are almost an inversion of the Delphi configuration where as Delphi's were lower 
Halicarnassus are higher up. Interesting. Why would that be? But yeah, definite cluster here. Ah, and even a couple more up here at the top. Ah, it's more up here. So yeah, around the doorways. That seems to be a reoccurring theme as well. Another great photo here with the perfect lighting. We'll zoom in. See them? That's a pattern, guys. That That is not a lifting boss. Again, the seats, the fl they flare out. You're, you're gonna, whatever you're gonna put on that is gonna slide off. And we're trying to lift from them. No, th these, these aren't for lifting. These, these are something else. I think they're like what's going on in Egypt, like what's going on in Peru, what's going on in China, and in India, all over the world. We have these nubs on these stones, and there seems to be some deeper esoteric meaning to them. Okay, here's a really good high quality photo of one of these upper areas just to drive the point home. So look at this for example. There's only one nub on this block and look at where it is. If you were lifting this thing and lowering it down with rope and you had the, the rope around that nub, the lip of the seat sticks out farther so it would slide off. It's not a good leverage point in this configuration. And some of these other nubs they just don't have much shape to them. They're very, you know, crude, lumpy, however you want to describe them. Not very defined, but they're not a purchase point for a piece of wood or some rope. I just, I'm not seeing that. And again, we see these kind of blocks again. I'm calling these inverted bevel blocks. Now, we talk about the bevel blocks, the blocks that have the carved out edges all the way around the corners. These are kind of like an opposite of that. They have really hard corners that are smooth and, and finely dressed, but the interiors are pitted and rough, and uh, they look really more eroded. Uh, it's kind of hard to describe it, but the interiors, even on these seats, are the same way. So, however these inverted bevel blocks were done, the, the seats were done the same way. And it kind of follows the edge, and you can even see, let's zoom in on that again. I know it's kind of pixelated, but you can see how this texturing follows the outline of this block and even goes up a little bit right here for some reason. Very curious. I'm not I'm puzzled by that. Another great photo by Alex Ovchivnikov. Thank you, sir. Zooming in all the way. You can see, again... The lower portions don't have them. Nope. But these upper portions definitely do. And you should stand in this area to be able to see all of these. And maybe there were more. A lot of these rows are missing, guys. Maybe there were more. And then this one, which is probably the highest quality one I have. You can see all different shapes and sizes, guys. They all seem to be pretty centrally located on the blocks. For the most part, each one. Oh, I say that, and here's one off-center. But for the most part, they all seem to be pretty centered on the blocks. So, for someone to say that they were lifting, I could see that. But then, eh, well, we'll get over here to this side. These two little tiny ones... Is that one block? That might be two. This one seems a little off-center for this block. I think someone has to admit that. And some of these smaller blocks, do they really need these nubs? I still haven't found the nub that goes across the block. I'm not sure which site that was. I thought it was Halicarnassus. But I could be wrong. I might have been thinking about something like that where it's just a crack it's hard to say and it's an easter egg hunt so good luck finding it if any of you guys in the comments 
want to tell me where it is if you look up some of these photos yourself or pause it and see if you can see anything interesting but uh, I'm not going to waste your time by looking around too much but you get the idea on this site moving on real quick we'll, we'll do an honorable mention shout out to Hierapolis in Denizli, Turkey we talked about this in one of the earlier videos this is an amphitheater it's on the outside these are nubs and they're only on these this corner and these appear to be a different color I want to say on the right hand side they look the same color as the blocks but on the left hand side they look to be darkened and however that happened whatever that implies you guys tell me but a concentration a clustering a pattern same thing right I think we're looking at connections here so next we'll move on to megalopolis or megalopolis however you pronounce that this is in Greece and I'm actually kind of lucky because I searched for photos again today and I found some newer photos that I didn't have in my collection and one of these photos we'll go ahead and look at that one first down here at the bottom a couple of nubs and then one on the bottom here by this column and it's the exact same or almost the exact same configuration on the other side but the photos we have of the other side are not nearly as good as these so we'll zoom in a little bit just to show you guys and drive home the point it's that kind of capital D shape again rounded top flat bottom and these down here are more square maybe a little more broken off and this is this configuration is going to be a repeating pattern in the next few amphitheaters we'll look at so this is one of my first photos I had I think shout out Ziggy Dan I think he was the one that first showed us Megalopolis and you can see over here on the left hand side just a couple again like the right hand side but these are I think these might be higher up than on the other side we'll compare that this is the bottom of the capital element and then there's another nub below that we'll go back to the other one aha I don't think there is one there so it, it's a variation unless one is broken off from above and we can take it as far as we can I don't know it could there might be a trace there we could we, we could speculate that there was a mirror image of the right hand side to the left hand side here where two nubs so that's that's decorative we could you know we're looking for variation because variation implies you know something other than just decoration so we have to keep that in mind that some some of these nubs could just be really worn decoration and not anything more than that problem with this site is they keep letting the grass grow so it's hard to find good photos with good quality of these with grass cut but I don't think there are any on the middle seats I think they are just here on these end pieces and one thing I want to point out before we move on that's really all I have to show other than the highlight examples I think yeah this one we don't have a good quality photo of this but it appears that there are more on the side here the same capital D shape and then I think we want to say maybe a couple up under this ledge but I'm not I'm really not sure it's hard to say right you you push the quality of these photos so far and then you start speculating so yeah I'm not sure it just gets into a pixelated patch but you can see there's pretty much yeah these are pretty clean surfaces on the other seats I don't see any others and this is a rather small theater maybe there are upper seats though because in the next photo I want to show you this is another recent photo I just found haha -ha, they are excavating the left hand side and you can zoom in we'll get as far as we can here no nubs to be seen if there are the quality is terrible at this point but you can see these are big slabs and you can see it goes all the way up here to the tree on the side so who knows that this whole 
earthen area above the seats. Could have been stone at one point. Maybe there's remnants under there. Maybe some of them have nubs on them, you know? Makes you wonder. And maybe even on the back side, they could be on the exterior walls. They could be anywhere on these structures. They seem to be clustered wherever they are, though. Next is Myra, Turkey. And Myra, we've already talked about. And you guys may know some of the stuff around Myra, the Lycian tombs. This stuff, the rock-cut tombs. I want to go ahead and propose that the way they cut these were the same way they were cutting stones in Peru. And you see these big things and you go, okay, you're going to say those are nubs, aren't you? And they're not. They're just decorative elements of the facade. I'll say, okay, yes, those probably are decorative elements of the facade. Well, what about these little guys? What about this guy here? And then I think under that watermark, there's another guy over there. And they're just oblong little lumps. They're not anything more than that. Maybe there were others that were broken off. And then, you know, you could look into those cliff tombs and, and all these rock-cut chambers, and you could probably find some nubs. Uh, I haven't really looked too hard in that, that area. I know the other regions like Xanthos, those areas have a lot of those nubbed boxes. We can get into those in another episode. I know I need to work on the nubbed boxes episode. But this Myra Turkey Amphitheater has bevel blocks, polygonal connections, L-shaped blocks, and we'll start. Oh yeah, by the way, this is also the area of that granary we talked about in an episode prior where it has the single nub it seems symbolic here you know the same capital d shape sideways hard bevel lines on most of these blocks yeah i think all this is connected guys i think all this architecture is connected by these same builders and this same process so moving on to the actual amphitheater same kind of design again the outer structure is pretty ruined here it looks pretty reconstructed i don't think you can trust any of that but then you look into the back zoom in oh boy this one is peppered with nubs top to bottom all over the place and up along the back too we're going to see more and better photos but that's a good overview photo shows you the floor too the floor doesn't have any blocks this most of the ones we'll see will either be earthen floors implying they haven't excavated any further or destroyed floors and then other examples like at delphi we'll see nice floors some of them have mosaics and things um, all kinds of different art things we can focus on but you know, I think these little modest nubs are maybe a little more important. I don't know. We'll, we'll see. Okay, so I found the nub that goes across blocks, I think. Can you guys see it? We'll zoom in here. What do you think about this one here? We'll zoom in even more. We'll push it as far as we can go. What do you think? Is that a crease? Is that a crack? A seam? Look at the, the, the general shape and size of the other blocks. Is that just a crack? I'm willing to admit that might just be a crack. So, if we find a nub that goes across the block, that's definite evidence of something going on. I mean, even right down here, this is definite seam, this is a straight line, and this is the end of the block, this is all one block. This seems like half a nub, that's interesting, right? It, it has a sharp end right on the end of the block. It's curious. I mean, there are so many nubs in these, you can look for hours and find all kinds of different patterns, configurations. I think that's the point. I think people like Chris over at the Stone Nub Language on Twitter and 
Phil at the Ancient Alternative View, you guys are going to have a field day with some of these, and you just, if we could just get these charted and plotted by somebody, who knows what we'll start connecting. Another great, nice contrast and time of day photo. I don't know, you see that one again? Is that a seam? Is that a crack? I don't know. Hard to say. Two large ones there. An oblong one there. And then lots of little ones peppered throughout. And another little oblong. And if this was one whole block, it was oblong. Up and down all throughout. And then bevel blocks at the top. You can see the hard bevel lines and L-shaped blocks. I just wanted to point out down here at the bottom, you can see a couple pairings. Maybe this is a pairing too, and no others. And it appears that this block on the right with the nubs is one of those lipped edge blocks where the edges look like they ooze out and the middle is recessed or pushed in. I don't know what to think about that. Maybe these are, you know, the pixelation here. Maybe these are bevel blocks. If you go up here to the right-hand side, you can see the hard margin lines on these bevel blocks. And that's the traditional style again. That's how I started my channel, just looking at these kind of blocks with these recessed edges and how many sites have these. Here's a really well-carved capital. You can see it's the Ionic style, the dual scroll, scrolled in style, or maybe it's a variation of that style. I'm not too sure, but very well done. And then you can see in the background some of these bevel blocks like we're talking about. The edges are recessed and smooth. The middles of the blocks are raised. Now they're kind of pitted and rough in some instances. Other instances are smooth. Some more square holes here in the background. Here's another exterior wall. This is farther back. I think this is the proper exterior wall. And you can see some remaining artwork. First of all, look at all the nubs. Man, that's a lot of them. And you can see them from even back here. And then bevel blocks, like we've been saying, smooth edges, raised middles. And then lower, more of these blocks, maybe this recess style almost, the uh, inverted style, it's getting pretty close. The, uh, the edges are about the same as the middles, right? Down here you can see a little bit different, you know, they kind of vary. And right here, this one is definitely inverted. The middle is pitted, the edge is raised. But we have surviving artwork, and I believe this is all original artwork and we see a lot of this style of artwork on a lot of the boxes of this region. A lot of these wreaths and garlands and faces. More of these bevel blocks. You can clearly see the edges and how they vary. And some of them, the middle stick out real far. Others, you know, it's very shallow. But there's, ver there's variance throughout all of it. And one last look here, and you can see this surviving artwork and how I assume it would have gone all the way around. The bevel blocks down at the bottom, it's usually where we see them, but they go up into the upper structure over on the left and the right. And even from back here, you can still kind of see some of these nubs. Okay, next is Patara, Turkey. And I love this example because there's only a couple. And we've looked at this site before, early on in the Bevel Block series. We looked at this archway, this gateway, and it is definitely Bevel Block. And I happened to find some really high quality versions from those angles you can really see the bevels in these photos plain as day and there there seems to be some lower elements here i don't know if that i don't know what that hole's about but 
seem to be more to it going a little bit lower than I thought but yeah this is all original I think this is very well preserved top to bottom I think this is all original and the shift it's decorative from bevel block to smooth showing they could do that if they wanted to and they could make wacky connections like some of these if they wanted to make it very stable last a very long time and I didn't mention last time that this box is literally feet away from that gate and this box has nubs on its lid and yes we could say that in this configuration these nubs could be for lifting and I think that's really the only configuration where I, I can definitively say that with these box lids that's the only time I can say that they are for lifting uh, one thing I do want to point out that just like on the larger bedrock examples this one has the bottom carved out why is that that's interesting was that just breaking into it I don't know that it it might have been intentional might might have been part of if this thing had a function and it wasn't just somebody's coffin it might have been part of the function and you can see this kind of has a bevel line to it I think I have another photo of this maybe a couple photos we'll look at these yeah you can see you can obviously see that there were two one broke off the other one I think they were both about this level of refinement but we see others that are so refined they are animal depictions they're like lion's heads and all kinds of things so they could make them as refined as they wanted to or if they wanted to leave them lumpy they could too down here at the bottom you can see it's kinda in shadow but that is definitely a nub right there more damage breaking into it or from the function I don't know you guys tell me we'll move on though to the amphitheater and looking at this bevel blocks okay we know something's going on here but I looked for a while it took a long time till I got to this photo and this is one of the only photos on the internet that will show it you have to look close I know you can't see it from here there's no way you can see it from here but we will zoom in way in hello there they are maybe one up there too but I believe these are the only ones and with this quality photo I think it's undeniable right are those or aren't those two nubs on that one block and I want to say that one is two but then we'll zoom out and I don't believe I see any others or any that are broken off so here at Patara I was really I mean like it took me about an hour to find this photo and I I wouldn't give up because I knew they had to be here but why aren't they anywhere else in this structure right nowhere not on the backs of the steps I mean maybe there are some blocks that have been removed and the one right next to it is damaged we could speculate and say maybe the block next to it might have had nubs but that is so crazy that that tells me something that I don't know what it tells me but that tells me something this has to mean something more than just a lifting boss I'm not gonna accept that anymore there's just no way I mean I will concede for the for the boxes guys I mean of course wh what else could those be for in that scenario but man some of these things again with the lipped edge on the seat you know I know it's broken off here but originally it would have had these lipped edges unless this is an out-of-place block that was put there but I'm telling you with the other examples we've seen it looks like it's where it's supposed to be it's just missing its lip but if it was placed there when it had its lip those little things are not gonna have any kind of purchase for rope and tackle or any kind of scaffolding or any of these other simplistic answers I know it's easy to go to those answers but 
the evidence is a little bit more complicated than that. Yep, there, there is no other nubs. I'm going to say those three, and that is it. If they didn't want to put them anywhere, they wouldn't. If they wanted to, they would. And you can see, I believe, yeah, these are some original art elements again. And it's pretty faded, but it looks almost kind of like, you know, well, you see a, a sword. I think that's a sword, and this might be a depiction of a box. It's got a bow on it. We'll zoom in a little bit more. There might be articles on what these are, but we're not really focused on the art, but that is interesting. It's relief art, so who knows if this stuff was made the same way. Maybe not this one, right? You can see this one's carved in, but this one is in high relief. And where's the rest of it, right? Hold on. If this was more art, I bet you most of these blocks in this foreground structure have been restacked. A lot of this stuff originally contained art. And these square holes, these notches, let's point those out while we're here. Oops, sorry, let's zoom in, zoom in a little bit. Yeah, square hole filled in, another square hole. Those are curious. I wonder if all the original ones had that. And I wonder if that was to support a floor with wooden beams. That, that seems logical. I think in some of these square hole instances. I think here used to be one. I think some of those used to be where wooden beams went in to support the floor. Other ones maybe, I'm not sure. But I, I'll, I'll concede some uh, logical reasons for some of these square holes, especially in these configurations and in the rows. If you see them repeat like, like a standardized pattern, you know that's when you start to think more rational, simplistic answers. But when you see this sporadic nature of some of these other ones, I cannot concede that this is a, a standardized lifting technique on these nubs, guys. Not all the time. Maybe only a couple of times, but not in these cases. Here's a really cool photo. Shows that art again, but we're going to look a little bit farther to the left. Maybe some of this wall is original. We see, first of all, one with a missing corner. We see one with a filler stone. Then we see some interesting blocks with depressions in them. And I want to zoom in on these. That looks like the capital D shape. And I don't know why that's there. Some of this other stuff, I don't know. But that is a very curious artifact in the stone right there. I don't know what that is. And this one down here. No nubs in these seats. You know, Some of this stuff, it's lichen and moss. Really hard to tell. If there are any others in this, there's only a few. And now going back with this vantage point, I don't even think I can see him. Maybe, yeah, this block right here. See, the grass kind of partially hides them. And that other one I thought was a nub up here. But you see how important it is to have high quality photos. Okay, guys, my voice is starting to go. So I'm going to try to wrap this up quickly. Last spot, preen grease. We've talked about this before with this crazy wall that has this puffy exterior. I once said that I thought maybe later peoples came by and chiseled the bevel block back to make this exterior. But after looking at Belevi Mausoleum, the tumulus around that in Turkey, I think that that was their style. It was a puffy exterior style that they wanted. And it's original to the structure. But it's, it is a variation of a bevel block or the same process, I think, however they molded these stones. Okay, so looking at the amphitheater, I had only looked at a couple photos before. I had seen that there were a couple at the bottom on either side of the altar, but I didn't realize until I dug a little bit deeper. They wrap around that whole row behind the altar. See, here's that altar here, and then this row they wrap around. This is a really good photo. We'll zoom way in, and then they appear. Boop, 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 boop. This one's very big. These blocks look like the lipped blocks with the edges of material on them again. Especially down here, you can see that. And these nubs vary in size and shape. 
not very defined or refined except these up here which are a little bit more square and they stick out more but the other ones just crude lumpy shapes interesting right and another angle from up above where you can see there are none in the upper courses this is kind of an interesting variation on these seats how these they have these big you know false nubs or facade nubs or however you want to describe those just as parts of the seats that stick out every few courses that seems pretty regular standard that seems artistic right but then you get down here and why are these down here is this artistic they they don't really follow a line these blocks have this specific oozed edge phenomenon going on whatever that is ah maybe that one has a nub there and then I think yeah if you look down here this one has a nub this one's like hidden hidden on the back side okay and then just one more angle here of preen grease you can see there's not really any in the upper courses I don't see any at all really but down here at the bottom on this one specific foundation row they go all the way around and then just a really close-up view of the side here I just want to point this out you can see this line again this line of demarcation this transition line where they change the exterior surface treatment of these blocks so you have a you know it looks like what a bevel block would be but it's not beveled it's kind of the same level as the interior it's just the edges have been smoothed really well and the interiors have been left pitted or made to be pitted kind of like the larger or the I guess you could call these larger marks if it's done the same way maybe large marks small marks made similar tools but that's very interesting how it does that it's very well done and I, it's all these are very hard to call bevel blocks aren't they it's like is it inverted or is it regular or is it kind of right in between perfect balance I don't know preen is very nice it's a very nice sight and there's not too much anomalous about it other than this one row of the nubs of course all right we'll close it up there today guys but I think that's some pretty compelling evidence for that being something more than just a lifting boss to raise and lower the block into place guys I think that is a very simplistic answer I think petrified wood I really these examples don't look wood to me I don't see any other odd areas of petrified wood sticking out it's just isolated and concentrated these certain areas of the structures the backs of the seats the certain corners of the walls and the lower foundations so it's not just a foundation phenomenon but that seems to be a repeating pattern but there are a lot of other repeating patterns so it's just one of many so if you guys want to do some investigating on your own there are I think there's over a hundred to maybe three hundred of these amphitheaters you know just look up Greek and Roman amphitheaters to start but you know who knows how many different amphitheaters there are around the world that are attributed to different people that may have these nubs on them just follow these hallmarks and I think you will be surprised at what you find I was just looking at a theater the other day it's it's more of like an arena in Croatia and it has bevel blocks and I was like wow that's that's kind of far away I wouldn't expect it all the way out there but then I've seen some things lately from Russia that will blow your mind and I think I'm going to make a specific video about that place it is called Kronstadt we finally have the name of it and we actually have another video to reference now with some nice footage so look forward to that in the future and all my other promises of videos are still on the table we're gonna get to those topics eventually but there's lots of different things to talk about so thank you all again for hanging out with me today and we will talk to you next time